Okay, so first, I would like to say thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate it, and I'm definitely going to be sure to, to keep post a comment there as well as here. And, uh, and, and maybe if you may be watching this, um, I wanted to make clear that there's I, I have content and I had also had content ideas that I want to talk about that I'm sure YouTube would either just completely block it or, you know, it would eventually get blocked or taken down because because it comes from because a lot because some topics I want to touch on come from movies and television shows. That was the problem with that Darcy shit. And when I made those old videos about Jan from the office, like a lot of that shit, like I don't know if you could notice, but a lot of that shit got cut out because those videos were, were much longer than what made it to YouTube. So I so I needed a place to put up where it's like, you know, un, you know, where where it wouldn't get cut or risk of taking now so people could see it. So so on my Patreon, that's going to be where um, where the videos that, you know, that probably that where I'm making fun of like music videos or like or, or movies or your or, or you know, media or books or feminists like shit that will trigger YouTube's attention. And it'll probably get me shut down, take it down on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to put I'm switching off. I mean, I'm either going to switch it over or I'm just going to put new material that I never even put on YouTube over there. So if anybody's interested, that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to put a link in my Patreon in the description. But also, I'm not going to stop posting on YouTube, man. I'm not going to stop posting on YouTube. Um, so yeah, anyway, again, thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. it. It's much appreciated. And actually today, I got something planned um, from one don one person who donated. Um I have something planned. You're gonna see that a picture, an update of that. Maybe, maybe in about uh, four or five hours, I gotta go um, donate what he donated to me. So anyway, to this video, the labor of love, Christy Katzman. I, I hope that's how you say her name. I don't know how you say her name, but anyway, this woman is completely ridiculous. Like, I mean, just just look at the main picture right here, like. You see, the reality of that picture, men have to, a, a big part why, okay, in the last video where that I made the beta house, the beta house, men have to understand women before they, like how they phrase, before they make the vote. Because she, they were saying how men miss the vote. Men only miss the boat because they don't understand the reality of what woman is really doing and what she really wants. You see, this the the, the top of picture alone pretty much explains her entire life. If I had to guess, because I skimmed through the article, and it all makes all of it's lining up and it makes sense, man. It really does. the The picture you see at the top. That is her. Okay, see, these men don't understand it. All this is doing is stroking her ego. This is not arousing her vagina. This is not making her love them even more. She, this is an ego stroke. See, with women, it's all about... With, to, with, with a woman, it's all about fucking the, the atmosphere of how she met you and shit like that. And women, like women will really make a full assumption of you based off of like, just like, 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 like I said, how she met you, where she met you, wh where was your charisma level at? You know what I'm saying? When, when you were talking to her the first time and then she'll make a full diagnosis of you in the first two to 10 minutes and know exactly where you're going to fit into her life. All right. Like I said in the last video, for those who can watch the last video, and actually I'm going to put that on my Patreon too, because that got taken down because it said it, uh, the, it was too sexual. So, and, and it, and it should have had an age, restric age restriction over 18. I didn't put it on it, so it, it automatically restricted it. But, um, yeah, her th this woman's ego is just... it. Men have to understand that shit. Like, to a woman, man is supposed to automatically just be ready as man. You see, th this is an entitlement that women... Women have this entitlement in the world. A woman is born. A woman can just walk around and just be woman and somebody wants to fuck her. Whereas a man, by the time he approaches a woman, a man has to be established. Yeah, he, like he has to be, you know, like like aware of the world, aware of himself, aware of his woman, aware of you know, aware of starving children. He has, he has to be aware. But bitches don't have to do any of that. Woman just has to walk around and just walk, really just walk around. She don't even have to have have to have on nice clothes or nothing. A woman can walk around and a woman can wake up, smell like shit with a dirty t-shirt and and oily pants. 
Like she worked in a, in a, in a, in a car garage and some dudes gonna come up and try to fucking wife her up. Guaranteed. It's just how it is. Anyway, so let's get to the topic. I'm going to read through. This is a long article. I'm not sure if I'm going to make through the whole article. So anyway, Labor of Love premiered with the show star 41-year-old Christy Katzman, meaning her hopeful 15 dads <laughs> eliminating. <laughs> I can't even make it fast eliminating. How the fuck? <laughs> How the fuck did she eliminate somebody? Like that. that <sighs> okay, anyway. She eliminated Tally... Raffaele and Philip Michael Jacques during Thursday's night episode on Fox. Christy sent a 46-year-old attorney from Miami, Florida, and Philip, a 38-year-old medical technician at a children's hospital from Los Angeles, California, packing after she determined she couldn't envision a future in starting a family with them. See, now, how much you want to bet on her fucking Tinder profile and dating profile, she's looking for ex for exactly this shit. See, this is why you don't pay attention to what women say, on, especially on online dating. But now you also got to remember, the only reason she's being this gangster is because she's the only woman with all these men around her. Like, and this is what Donovan Sharp said in a video, man. And, and this is real shit. For real. Like. And I and I say this, women only act right when they're humble. You see, there's see, she is not being humbled when 15 men show up for a chance at her pussy. She's not going to act like she has sense. Now, if it had been flipped, let's say if it had been one 40-year-old man with 15 women trying to fuck him, I guarantee you her her standards would have uh, her whole personality would have got back down to normal I immediately. Anyway, so she goes on to say the, the connection just wasn't there and you can't force that kind of thing. I still want to settle down and have a family. I'm 46 years young and I'm ready to go, Tali said in his final words. Okay, so he said that. So he he's 46 years old and, you know, he's ready to go. That is a situation. You see, the guy, there's a lot of guys who fall into this situation, man. He's looking for it. And... With men, now women, it could be a little different, but with men, it's like, if, if you're trying to get bitches, it is exactly like trying to catch a butterfly or a fly with your bare hands. Like, you are going to, all the time and effort and mental energy and distress you're going to spend on chasing this bitch, she, like, if you do get lucky and catch her, it, it's just, it wasn't worth the, the, the energy exchange, okay? And it's, it's not going to be right. When do you and when will you when can you catch a fly or a butterfly? When you stop giving a fuck about it and you go sit the fuck down and don't care, it's gonna land right on your fucking nose. I don't know if you guys seen that picture, but there's like a, a meme or something about it, like where a guy he's trying to catch a butterfly and shit, and he's like, you know, he's going crazy, 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 trying to run after it, and as soon as he sits down, the butterfly just comes and lands right on his nose. That's how it is with bitches. Bitches are the same way. As soon as you stop caring, that's when they're going to start going like, oh, he must be valuable because he doesn't care. And I wonder what he's doing. Oh, my God. But if you're on this whole thing of, I'm ready to go. Yeah, man. See, she, she can smell that on you. She can smell it on you. Anyway, to keep this video from here too long, I feel like I got to like kind of read through this kind of fast. So anyway, and Philip said, following his ouster, never heard of that. Okay, I follow, okay, after Philip got kicked off, I totally respect your decision. This is the universe saying, Philip, get back home and get to know some people. See, man, like, yeah, that, that, that's a little more calm, but like, he, like it's, he's still looking. That's the fucking problem. Like, stop paying bitches attention. Stop, stop focusing on one. Or stop focusing on bitches. Like, go, go, go fucking make a model car or some shit. Or learn how to, you know, fucking wire electricity or learn another language. Like, stop focusing on it that's why he they all let down because they focusing on it the premiere broadcast of labor of love began with christy from chicago introducing herself to viewers saying she has a great life but is missing love and children christy ravina this is where it, it, it is like it's pretty much clear she's super fucked up christy revealed she got married at 37 years old and it got so bad that she made the difficult decision to to, to file for divorce six months after standing at the altar so, let's do the math on her. She got, okay, because she's not a bad-looking girl. She really isn't. She is not a bad-looking woman. She looks, she looks pretty fucking good, especially for 40. For an American woman, 
she looks good. I'll give her that. But you also see, and this is where this is where like women have to understand like the if they like it or not, woman's value is like a car's value. You see, she's thirty seven. When she was thirty seven, when she got married. Okay, so let's rewind the clock back when she was 18, 19, 20. How many, how many guys spit in her mouth, climbed on top of her while he was sweaty and drunk, spitting on her, peeing on her, busting nuts in her asshole, face, vagina, ear, nose, shoved, you know, who how many times? How like look at a bitch that old, man. And and and, and when you think about how many times. Has some man climbed on her sweaty drunk after they was just mad at each other, fucked the shit out of her and spit in her face, drip sweat all in her face, pissed in her face, came down her throat. Okay, and then she still managed to find a beta at 37. <laughs> we pass all that. She still managed to find one at 37, which that was against all odds. But I will now I will say she is a good looking girl, so she could still pass, do the whole thing of, well, I'm 37, but like if I do my makeup right in the right lighting and I act, you know, like a ditzy girl, I could come on, I could pass for 27. You know, she probably could. If she looks as good as she does now, you know, yeah, she probably could do that. So that was working in her favor. That was the only reason she got married. But also, do you gotta look at the reality of this? Once she gets married at 37 and she looks the way she does. Okay, that guy is completely comfortable with going out and getting a 27-year-old, a 25-year-old that looks like her or better. You see, that's the other part that women don't understand. Like, yeah, it's good to look beautiful when you're 20, when you when you when you're younger, but when you're older and you still look like that, okay, you're older, you're more bitter because you've been through more relationships. You're bitter because there's younger, prettier women than you. You're bitter because men are paying those women more attention. It just like it just compounds and then just the woman just being mentally fucked. It, it does. Unless she can stay with one man or she keeps she has a good track record, a great track record with, with men. You know, she was only in long term relationships and for, you know, five, 10, 12 years type shit. And they just fizzled out like don't like once they end up like this, man, they, they're fucked. Anyway, let's keep going. I did choose the conventional path and it didn't work out. What? If I if I don't meet the right person, I'm prepared to become a mom on my own, Christy told the cameras. The conventional... Bitch, you got married at 37. There's nothing conventional about that. See, well, maybe to an idiotic modern feminist, that's a conventional path to get married at 37 years old. That, that is, There is nothing conventional. Okay, there, what is conventional about about pretty much okay she pretty much tells on herself she got pumped and dumped and 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 then she ended up trying to marry a beta who she thought was a beta and he probably ended up being an alpha for real once he got with her and she it, and she didn't see it coming so she ended up separated within six months she sees that as a conventional path that is not conventional okay that is not conventional is is finding a partner while you're still in your prime and give him all your best years so he gives you all his best years in response i have a good friend of mine who did that a great friend of mine, his wife did that. He found her when she was fucking 19, 20 or some shit. She gave, and I was there the whole time. She gave him her best years. She really did. She really did. And now she, she she's about 30, 31, and now she's gaining weight like every fucking two minutes. But I got to tell you, man, like, like I wouldn't be mad. I, I don't think I've ever talked to him about this part of it, but I wouldn't be mad if he left her, but... I would be kind of salty for her because she did give you, she did give him her best years. So she deserves this. Like she deserves you to sit down and work with her because she, she, when she was, when that girl was 19, like she always turned heads and she was dedicated to him. So I applaud her for that shit. And she deserves for him to give her all his best years. She really, she really deserves it, man. But anyway, back to this mess. <laughs> Christy was showing a meeting with the with the reproductive endocrinologist, Dr. Kaplan, who told her that her levels looked good for having a baby, much better than what her her chronological age is. So there's hope, Christy noted. I always assumed I'd become a mother, but I am very aware of my age. Christy met with the show's host, Sex and the City actress Kristen Davis. Oh God, at a beautiful home. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's even the ice on the cake. They got this the, the Sex of the City bitches who pretty much promoted bitches like this into this lifestyle. To, to get pumped and up, pumped and up, pumped and up because you strong, independent woman. They even got a bitch from Sex in the City. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Like I said, man, if you want the best comedy show on earth, just, just get a bunch of women together and just call the show women. You don't have to say women say the darndest things. You don't have to make the show, you know, women. Da -da -da -da. Like, just name it women. And just watch women. Just watch their actions. Like, they, the show's host was made from what it came from was a star on a show that was made at training women to become in this situation. Like, and they try to spice up. They met at a beautiful home. And Chris, Kristen and Christy was about to skip, was about to skip the dating and go straight to baby making. You, you see, she doesn't want a husband. They tell, they tell you right there. She doesn't want a husband. Skip the dating and go straight to baby making. Now, a beta man, a, a blue pill beta man, all and, 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 and don't forget this, women know all this shit. She knows everything I'm getting ready to say is true. The only thing is women, either women completely agree with me or they get mad because I'm because I'm exposing all their fucking tricks. Okay, this part right here. And Kristen said, and Kristen said Christy was about to was about to skip the dating. And go straight to baby making. Okay, what that translates into her tactic was. She was going to try to find the, 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 the first successful beta buck she could find. And just give him, like, like I say in other videos. And give him A1 throat, asshole, and pussy for that baby. And a shot at his, and, and even, and a baby. And of course, um, a shot at his resources. That's just what, what it's going to be. Now. That Beta Bucks guy, see the Beta Bucks guy, this is a man who's never grown above shit. A girl, a, he's never grown above women and women's mentality. He still thinks that women are on a pedestal. I used to be there when I was 20, 20 to 20 to 27. I like I was always a little red pill, but I but deep down, I'll be honest with you guys, like I always put women a little bit higher up than me at all times. But the thing is, a lot of guys never grow out of that shit. What kicked me out, like I said in other videos, was going to brothels, you know, traveling the world, fucking bitches from other countries, and I started seeing consistencies. So that that's what helped me grow personally. But a lot of guys, you know, they, they graduate college, and they just go straight to a career, and they work that career, you know, they work in their field of career in their, in their same state, city, county, whatever the fuck, for 20, 30 years. They never grow. They never see anything, so they never grow, and they never grow above it. So what this beta man will see when he approaches a bitch like Christy, whatever the fuck her name is, when he and, and, and she's just giving him attention and slobber dobbering all on his cock for fucking, you know, for 15 minutes straight. She's just giving him the Slurpee Derp 9000 and giving her the, the anal blaster routine 1500 for fucking three hours. Oh, he is in love. And so both sides are getting what they want. He, the man that the beta man has misplaced love, and the woman's getting a potential baby out of it. They're both getting what they want, and then this is how the guy usually ends up fucked up, is because all she ever wanted was a baby. Okay, that she didn't want him; she wanted a baby. You see, and he and the, the beta man who, who has you know low experiences with you know with women's nature, he let his he let the fucking endorphins from you know. The endorphins and the, 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 the misplaced sense of loyalty from her slobber on his cock for 20 minutes, he let he allowed that to be read as love as unconditional love. So when it when her real color started coming out, you know, she's not texting back as much, she's not calling him as much, you know, she doesn't really care where he is. See, when that real side clicks back out, the man is just in a in an infuriated rage. It's like, what are you doing? Why don't you know I love you? You're not being a good wife. <laughs> And it just make and it, it just and it just it just it all just goes to shit. So anyway, back to the story. Kristen had found herself in a similar predicament since she spent her thirties working hard. So she ultimately decided to adopt two children. Oh, this, this is uh, Chris. Okay, Kristen was a Sex in the City bitch. Wait, hang on. Let me because I gotta make sure I'm, I got the right one. Because one of them was Christy. Kristen, okay. Yeah, yeah, Kristen. Kristen is a sex in the city bitch. 
Kristen had found herself in a similar predicament since, since she spent her 30s working hard, so she ultimately decided to adopt two children. Okay, I mean, it's, I got my own opinion on that, but I don't want to get into that. Men my age have already ruled me out because they think I'm too old to have kids or I would go out with them and they assume I don't want a family, Christy explained to the show's host. Yeah, and see, like I said, women know the reality. When she know, And see, the fact that she said that means that uh, you, women are going to sugarcoat anything they're going to say, especially if it's bad about themselves. So if she said that on, on camera, men my age have already ruled me out because they think I'm too old to have kids or I go out with them and they assume I don't want a family. Okay, the men who said this were the legit good quality men that she wanted. These 50, these 15 men who came to the show, they didn't say that. They competing for that pussy. <laughs> okay, but the men who said this, she's already aged out because she's too old to have kids or, or, or she doesn't want a family. The men who said that were the men she really wanted. That's who said that shit. Guaranteed. Kristen explained, a southern soirée, I don't know how you say that shit, for men as, as they've been arriving. Viewers were then introduced to Marcus Lemon, a, a 39-year-old anesthesiologist from Cincinnati, Ohio. Whoop, whoop, that's where I'm from, cuz. I'm from Cincinnati. Who previously appeared on Survivor, Gabon, and Jason S Christopher Smith, a 38-year-old flooring business owner from Charlotte, North Carolina, who said they'd love to have kids. See, like I said earlier, the guys who said that shit, men, ha men my age have already ruled me out because they think I'm too old, blah, blah, blah. Those were the men she actually wanted. See, notice these men that are competing for her pussy, they're not saying any of that because she didn't want these men. That's why she had to go on this show. Matt K., a 44-year-old former professional wrestler from West Hampstead, New York, said he lost his father, who was his best friend, and that the type of father... and. That the type of father he'd like to be. Alan, 39, writer from South Africa, said he doesn't believe in his philosophy. See, all this shit is just stroking her fucking ego, okay? The fact that these mother... Okay, this, mother, if mother, this motherfucker is from South Africa. Another motherfucker from West Hampstead, New York. North Carolina, Cincinnati, Ohio. These men are traveling <laughs> for some 41-year-old pussy. Marcus joked about how Alan looked like a, South, like a South African guy and had the looks of Sylvester Stallone with a ripped body. Trent Broke, Broke, Broach, I don't know how you say that, a 36-year-old tennis instructor from Denver, Colorado, called himself the woman whisperer since he has three sisters and he admitted he really wants to have a boy to carry on his family name. Well, you ain't that much of a woman whisperer if you dumb enough to fall for this shit. <laughs> you you a beta woman whisperer. You know what you are? You, you're the beta <laughs> You're the beta whisperer. <laughs> you know how to be a beta. Trent, bruh. Okay, if you was a woman whisperer, you would have known not to travel from Denver, Colorado to fucking wherever this show's taking place at to compete with 14 other men for some 41-year-old pussy. You ain't that good of a woman whisperer. I should name this shit the woman whisperer, LOL, because that shit just took the cake. I ain't even make it this far in, in, into the article. He claims to be a woman whisperer. He is 36 years old. Travel. A tennis instructor. Tennis instructors are not like I looked in to take a tennis lesson. Tennis lessons are not fucking cheap. So depending on the circles he in, that, that motherfucker might have some, he might, he might have some, some decent ducats. You know what I'm saying? He ain't he ain't broke. <laughs> All right. If you get into tennis, like that shit's not cheap. Depending on where you are, I guess. In Ohio, that shit wasn't cheap. But lessons, that shit was like $75 an hour or some shit like that. But he calls himself the woman whisperer. That shit. See, I would laugh more, but it's, it, man, I woke up at, at, at like fucking eight this morning, man. Because like, I've been like, I've been on a weird sleep schedule because I got sick. Long story, man. I would laugh at that shit, but I feel like I'm going to hurt my chest. So I'm trying to hold that shit in. The woman whisperer. Anyway. Stuart Gill, a 40-year-old wealth management CEO from Los Angeles, California, explained he worked extremely hard to provide for his family, but he didn't have a family. Stuart said there's no point to make a lot of money if you have no one to share it with. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's just beta all over it. That, that's just beta. Because money, no, see, money doesn't define anything about you, son. Money doesn't make anything. 
he 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 is the perfect he is the perfect candidate to be a bad. He's probably going to end up winning. Stuart Gill, if he said this shit on live television, he didn't have a family. Stuart said there's no point to making a lot of money if you don't have anyone to share it with. If you don't have if you have no one to share it with. That is a perfect uh that is a perfect beta contendent. Per because he's defining making money with spending it on a bitch and spending it on kids. He's probably Stuart Gill, mark my words, Stuart Gill is probably gonna be in, at least in the top in, at least in the top five. Because he says some shit like that. Angela, I don't know how to say that. Clasticone. Clasticone. I don't know. What, An Angelo. A 39-year-old firefighter from Miami, Florida, revealed he had he had grown up in a tough neighborhood, but his father had taught had always taught him to put family first. Angelo attended to carry those values in his marriage. Philip noted he loves working with kids more than anything in the world, and Tyler insisted he couldn't wait. To have children have a 2020 resolution to make that happen this year. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, Philip, he was the one who got kicked off. Keith Reeves, a 38-year-old gym owner from Get Lost. Damn. Okay, told, <laughs> told the cameras he recently helped his friend co-parent for a year, and it reinforced how much he wants kids of his own. See, oh, God. If you end up like that, man. 38 i'm 34 like see and he's in california as a gym owner so like i mean guys can definitely like you know sugarcoat what they actually doing and shit like that but bruh you gotta get over that shit see he he's never seen it sounds like he's never like really lived with a woman and lived with kids see when men say shit like that they've never truly done it like mother like like that that really is when like once you've actually done it like you don't really want that shit unless like it happens to like you know unless it happens organically you don't want to be around any fucking kids as a grown ass man all right you let like I say after you've had it you don't want that shit bro <laughs> like uh, you you don't you you you're not actively going out purposely finding a bitch to impregnate so you can sit up with fucking babies and the bitch in the house you, you men try up they. Once a man becomes a grown man, he tries to find ways to get away from that. I mean, he still wants his girlfriend and, and, and his kids, but he's trying to go hang out. He's trying to he he wants to get away from them. He wants to keep them at home, but get away from them. He goes on to say, I can be explosive. I can I can be hot sometimes, but I'm quick to every emotion. The woman who like the women who like me. Like me because I'm intense, he said in a confessional. Okay, see that that is a red flag right there. I gotta give that to him, right? This is a red flag right here. To to a woman. If a woman's watching this, that's a red flag. What that what I take from that is he's mentally unstable. And that shit is not fun to be around. And if anything, he comes off if anything, the reason why he's 38 and he and he can't find a bitch to, to, because his mental instability is seen in other women. And see, women are supposed to be the mentally unstable ones. So he's coming into a relationship pretty much with the brain of a woman. And the woman smells it on him and says, no, I don't, I'm cool. I don't want that. I don't want that. And it, and it lasts up to he, until he's 38. Gary Malik, a 38-year-old baseball bat manufacturer from California, started his business in his garage and was ready to master being a father after mastering many other things in life. Walker Posey, a 41-year-old funeral director from North Augusta, South Carolina, said he's watched people die surrounded by friends and family, but also, but also people who have died alone. I 100% want, I 100% have a fear of dying alone. It's probably why I want to have a family. Walker noted. Kyle Kyle Klinger, 38-year-old director of sales for marketing from Texas. He's 6'8 and has served and has served five years in the Air Force. He said the clock was ticking. Okay, just okay. He's six eight from Texas and spent spent time in the military. Something about him is warding off women because all of that is 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 right up bitches fucking territory to make you automatic material to breed with. So something about his brain. See, like I said, like I said earlier in the video. If anybody's even still watching this point, like I said earlier in the video, when men miss the boat. Men miss the boat with women because they don't mentally grow above women. Okay, that's what it means when men miss the boat. When women miss the boat, it's because 
Well, it, first off, it's difficult for a woman to miss a boat. But if she does completely miss the boat, it's because she never learned how to come off her high horse. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's usually how the two miss the boat. The bitch is too, she's sitting too high up on a high horse, so she'll miss the boat. And a, and a man, he never mentally grew above woman's nature and learned a woman. For a man who, who, is, who is this tall and was in the military, and, and in America, Texas can be like a sexy, that, that could be something to market, and he's, a, and he's a director of sales. He's already got, look, he should have bitches who's working in sales under him trying to fuck him. You see what I'm saying? He had there should be bitches where he's going to work or where he or where he's selling shit. They see him and 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 they want him to come approach them. So some about him, I got to see what this dude looks like and shit. Cause some about his some about his character is is warding off bitches. Mario Calderon, a forty year old optician from New York, New York, said his dream was to be married with two kids, and the last person to ride was Budge Colson, a forty four year old creative director. For, so, oh my God, see. This woman is just getting her ego stroke because these men are traveling from around the country to come see her. But explain he's a conservative man with morals and wants to find love of his wants to find the love of his life. While most of the other men drink alcohol, drink heavily, but just sit back and sip the water. Okay, whatever the fuck. The men then met oh wow. The men then met mother to be, and the guys thought she was beautiful. She walks down the steps very gracefully and has a huge, beautiful smile. Obviously amazing. And the whole time thinking to myself, are you ready to make a lot of babies with me, Talia Joe, in a confessional? Wow. He is competing. Like, the mental state of these men is just sick. It's just, I mean, he is, well, I'm not shocked that Talia, Talia got kicked off first with saying shit like this to himself. That is creepy shit. Like, like, when the bitch sat back and heard this after he got kicked off, like she thought that's fucking okay. Either, either, either the bitch is so mentally ill she got off to it, or she's mentally saying and saying that's creepy as fuck, because he don't even know her yet. And this is what I say in other videos, man. A lot of times, what men really want is just a dog for companionship, and and maybe two or three good hookers. And it sounds like that's really what this motherfucker wants. Are you ready to make a lot of babies with me? This motherfucker just wants to fuck the bitch. But he's all, he's so confused, he doesn't even know it. Stewart kicked off his game right, Stewart kicked off his game right off the bat by getting Christy a glass of champagne. And Tr Trent admitted he wished he had made the first move. This is so sick and sad. That, th um, this is so sad. I don't, I can't even stomach this shit. I'm getting ready to stop this shit. I'm about halfway through the article. I'm going to stop. I'll pray. If anybody's interested, I'll make a part two. Going on into the rest of this shit. Because this is this just made my stomach. This literally just made my stomach hurt. I gotta go take a shit now. This made my stomach hurt. Off. I'm turning this shit off. If anybody's interested, definitely um if you want to comment that, you know, ask for part two. I'll keep going, you know, after I take a shit and you know, maybe don't lose some of this nauseous feeling I just got. But yeah, I'm out.